Hi, welcome to a 50 minute vinyasa flow practice. My name is Kaylee. When you are ready, you can meet me on your back on your mat. It might feel good to extend the legs out in front of you. It may feel best to keep the knees bent. I tend to prefer to have my feet down underneath the knees. Just let yourself settle in. Bring your hands onto your torso wherever they land is fine with your belly, with your chest. Breathe in, breathe out. Let yourself get connected to you. A couple more mindful cycles of breath here. Take a deep, clear breath in through your nose. Let the breath move down into the belly like you're filling up a balloon. And when you're ready, just open your mouth, exhale. You can feel the hips release a bit. Do that two more times. So deep, clear breath in through your nose. This time, bring the breath into the bottom of your ribs. Let the rib cage expand. And exhale, sigh it out. Maybe you feel the shoulders release a bit. One more long breath like that on your own. your arms into a bolt pose shape or a T out by your side. And then take a small little windshield wiper motion with the knee. So I say small to start. See if you can feel the sacrum rolling side to side across the mat beneath you. So as opposed to coming all the way onto the outer hip, keep a tiny tuck to the tailbone, massaging some of that fascia that covers the lumbar spine and that sacroiliac joint and then start to increase that range of motion. We're always going for a nice smooth movement in the joints. So you can feel the hips move smooth side to side, feel the thigh bone moving smooth in the hip socket on the right and on the left. And then go ahead and hook the back of the knees with the fingertips here. Kick one leg up toward the ceiling and then switch to the other leg up toward the ceiling. So a little bit of a hamstring stretch here. I don't care if the leg goes straight. Your ego might care about that, but see if you can kind of let go of that mindset of this practice being about, you know, a certain alignment or a certain, it's not all or nothing is what I'm saying. So we're actually doing a couple of things here. We're taking care of the sciatic nerve. So you don't want to pull on any nerves. So you want to just let them glide nice and smooth around the muscles and joints. Keep the legs lifted. Bring a little bit of space between the feet and then circle through your ankles. So nice smooth circles here. Spread the toes out wide. Switch the direction of those circles. And still coming back to that deep, clear breath in through the nose. You can sigh it out to the mouth whenever you want. We the lips sealed. Practice lengthening your exhales. Bring the feet down underneath the knees. Bring the palms down by your side. Tuck the tailbone toward the knees. Squeeze the glutes and then lift the hips. So active in the backside of the thighs and in the glutes. Lower the hips down. Inhale your arms back up over your head, lengthening out through the side body. It might feel good to arch the back a bit off the mat here. And then exhale, palms down to the side. Tuck the tailbone before you lift the hips up. We're gonna do a couple like that. So the inhale, the hips come down, the arms lift, maybe the back arches. The exhale, palms come down, tailbone tucks, and you're really activating backside posterior chain. Three more. Now three more is just a general, right? So you could be moving a lot slower, maybe a bit quicker than me. Try and avoid going super duper quick in this practice, we'll be able to kind of soothe the nerves a little bit more. The next time you're up in your bridge, stay there. So the hips are lifted, tailbone is still tucked, so the pubic bone is pulling toward the belly, and they come up onto the balls of the feet, activating the calves. Lower the heels and lift the heels. Lower the heels and lift the heels. So this part, you might move a little faster. The calf muscle is comprised of fibers that are gonna respond better to quick movement, 
but that doesn't mean that you've got to move fast. You might be taking your time with this and really owning that movement, and you could be alternating one heel at a time. Here for three. Deep, clear breaths for two. Lower all the way down on one. Bring the knees into the chest. Circle your knees over your hips. Little small circles, massaging the sacrum again. Switch the direction of those circles. We're going to start to rock and roll, so maybe hook the back of the knees, rocking along the length of the spine. Meet me in a tabletop position on your hands and your knees. You can always roll to the side first and transition. Honor your body, whatever that transition looks like. Once you land, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, spread the fingers. Feel yourself gripping the mat beneath you with your fingertips and then draw a couple big circles with your shoulders over your wrists. Lengthen out through the lower back so you're not ducking into the spine yet. Hips moving over the knees. Switch the direction of those circles. Continue to feel that grip underneath the finger pads. Now come through a nice neutral spine. Tip the tailbone toward the ceiling. Drop the chest toward your thumbs. Lift your chin. Finding cow. Take a deep breath in while you're here. Tuck the tailbone on your exhale. Draw the belly in and up. Chin moves toward the chest for cat. Take a few more of these on your own. And start to practice syncing up your movement to your breath. One of the most helpful things that you can do with movement is to utilize the breath. You notice when you forget to breathe or when the breath gets a little bit um, out of sync. And just practice bringing it back without judging yourself. The less we can let, the less we can get stuck in that perfectionism or all or nothing kind of mind, mindset, the better life ends up being overall. Great. Walk the hands forward a bit. Keep the knees where they are, but shift your shoulders forward. Drop the hips down. So immediately start to feel your core light up while you're there. And then we're just going to lower halfway down and come back on up. Feel free to lift the toes halfway down and back up. Starting to warm up the arms. We'll lift through the back of the neck and the front of the throat so the head's not collapsing in toward the chest and you're not looking up toward the ceiling. Look just a couple inches in front of your mat here. On three, we're gonna lower all the way down to the chest. Two, lower all the way down slowly on one. Untuck the toes if they were tucked under. Bring your arms to a W shape, press into the tops of the feet and then lift the chest without using your hands. Look over your right shoulder, take a breath in as you squeeze the shoulder blades together, activating the back. Exhale and lower down gently. Lift back up, no hands still. We'll use the hands in a minute, but we wanna warm up the spinal extensors here. Look over your left shoulder, take a deep breath. Lower down on the exhale. So the muscles and the joints work together. Come through the center here. Deep breath in. Sweep the arms back down toward your side. Interlace the fingers. A little bit more of a lift and a little bit more of a pinch through the shoulder blades. Maybe the chin comes up. And then lower everything down. Hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Come onto the palms and the knees. Find a supported plank here as you breathe in. And then let's take down dog. Press the hips up and back. Bring a little bit or a lot of movement into your down dog, checking in with all of your major joints from your ankles up through your knees to the hips. Checking with the spine, the shoulders, maybe the neck that feels good to give your head a really gentle shake or nod. And then when you're ready, walk your feet to the top of the mat. Meet about hips distance apart underneath you here. You can catch the crooks of the opposite elbows. Take a nice generous bend in the knees. Just let the crown of the head hang. Gravity is going to help bring some space into the back of the neck. Might feel good to get a little sway here, shifting a little bit more weight to the right or a little bit more weight to the left. Release the fingertips down. Head stays heavy. Vertebra by vertebra, roll up to standing. Feel your feet rooting down, feel your legs active. 
When your shoulders are over your hips, sweep the arms up. Take a deep breath in. You might even take the eyes up. And then bring your hands to your heart. Soften your gaze down toward your fingertips or maybe close the eyes all the way down. And so we've been moving for about 10 minutes here already, I think. Almost. Set an intention. Set a goal for your practice. So the more intentional or deliberate, oftentimes the easier it is to show up for yourself. So it might be your movement practice for the day. You might be taking care of your body. This might be a mental health practice for you. You might be taking care of your mind. It might be something along a more spiritual kind of lens. Just clear that up for yourself as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can fit that into your heart or your mind. We'll take a deep breath in together. Open mouth, exhale, offer that up. Send salutation A, blink the eyes open if they were closed. Reach the arms up on your inhale. Feel free to play around with lifting up onto the balls of the feet. And then hands come through heart center, drop the heels down as you fold forward, exhale. Halfway stretch here, take a breath in as you lengthen out the spine. Plant the hands, step back to high push up. First time through, pause in your plank pose, shoulders over the wrist. Feel free to drop the knees, but keep the shoulders over the wrist. Shift forward, bend the elbows back. Keep shifting the chest forward as you lower all the way down. Cobra pose. This time you can tent the fingers, press into the tops of the feet, but squeeze those back muscles. So squeeze the muscles alongside the spine. And then take it to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes under, press up and back. Look towards your knees or your toes as you take a breath. Stay for the exhale, softening the jaw. Look forward and then travel to the top of the mat. It might be a bunch of little steps. It might be one big one. Some of you might hop. Halfway stretch when you get there. That's your inhale. Shoulder blades wrap onto the back of the ribs. Forward fold, catch the calves as you exhale. Roll up through standing. Nice long inhale. Maybe you come onto the toes again. Bring your hands through heart center as you exhale. We'll add a side bend here. Reach up and breathe in. Catch the left wrist, bring it up and over to the right. Anchor down through the knife edge of your left foot. Maybe lift just the right heel, bring that right knee forward. Come back to the center, breathe in. Switch side, catch the right wrist, anchor through the outer edge of the right foot. So feel into that lengthening all the way up the right side body. Left heel lifts, bring the left knee forward, find a little bit more space in the waist. Come back to the center, breathe in. Forward fold, empty on the way down. Halfway stretch here on the inhale. Plant the hands. This exhale is high push up all the way down or halfway down. Come to cobra or upward facing dog. Inhale, still active in the back, bringing the shoulders down. Downward facing dog. Press with your hands and your hips back. We'll do one more of these sun salutation A's. Focus on the breath, really own every little bit of that movement. Look forward, lift the heels, empty your breath, and then travel to the top. Halfway up, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Rise with the inhale. Right into your side bend, catch the left wrist with the exhale, maybe the right knee bend. To the center, breathe in. Catch the right wrist, draw it to the left. Take it to the center, perhaps look up a little bit, glutes stay active, and then hinge at the hips, soften your knees forward, fold. Halfway lift here, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back, and flow through your vinyasa. And this part is lowering halfway, coming into the back bend before you find down dog. That is optional. You don't always skip it and land in your downward facing dog. From down dog, reset, regroup. Root down to your left foot. Take your right leg back behind you. Circle through your right ankle. Lift the right leg and then bend the right knee externally, opening that right hip. 
Press the palms down to send your chest toward your left thigh. And then play around with making some circles with your top knee. So that right knee is drawing some circles out to the right. Switch the direction of those circles. Checking in with that right hip joint. Re-extend the right leg as you take a breath in. Bring the knee into the chest. Step the right foot outside of the right pinky finger. Pivot a little bit to the left, and then we're gonna find Skandasana. Big low lunge here. Hands could come to the heart. Big inner thigh stretch for that left leg. And if this feels really not great in your knee, when you step that right foot forward, pivot the toes, bend the knee and bring the fingertips down. So we're always working in yoga to make the pose fit your body, not make your body fit the pose. That means you take whatever version is gonna support you feeling that is productive. And here we're gonna transition all the way to uh, warrior two to the back. Use your fingertips the first time. Feet come down, bend your left knee, reach the arms away from the midline. Keep pressing through the knife edge of your right foot. To get back to Skandasana, pivot the toes, low lunge over here, and then back to warrior two. Nice and smooth movement. Try that one more time. I might ditch this transition when we get to a flow, but it's a really great opener for the hips and the pelvis, right? Hang out in your skandasana in this little lunge here. We're going to take dragon flight twists. Left hand comes down under left shoulder. Pivot that left heel up and then reach your right arm up and open, rotating the torso to the right. Option to tent the bottom fingers or really firm up the legs and float the left hand. Deep, deep breath in. Find extended side angle. Bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Pivot the left heel down. That left arm is going to come up. Maybe left hand to the hip. Maybe left arm toward the ceiling. Maybe it reaches forward. So you can play around with which option feels most supportive in your body. We're going for sensation, but not pain. From side angle here, we're gonna take it up into crescent lunge. Sweep that left hand down, put the left heel up, and then both arms come up. Find your balance by setting your focal point somewhere on the horizon. It's not gonna move. Root down into the balls of your feet and lengthen up through the wrists. Full inhale. Plant the hand, step back and flow through your vinyasa or just go straight into downward facing dog. Whatever transition you choose, hone back in on your breath. And try that on the left side. Inhale your left leg, circle the ankle, bend the knee, externally opening through that left hip. Use your palms to press the chest toward the right thigh and then circle the left knee. Do you think about making, I don't know, circles that are like the size of a big dinner plate here. Switch the direction of those circles. Re-extend the left leg on the in-breath. We're gonna step into that skandasana, left hand outside of the left, or left hand, left foot outside of the left hand. Option right is to take a side plunge and just set. And find your balance here. The wrists are bugging you. This might be a good place to do a little wrist roll out. We'll stay off the hands for a second. You can use the fingers for a little bit of support transition where you're two to the back. Your Vajrasana, lengthen the arms away from the breastbone, but relax the wrists a little bit below the shoulder height so you don't have the shoulders creeping up into the ears. We'll try that transition a couple times. So Skandasana at the top. Warrior two at the back. A smooth movement here. Last time, spin off. So now this time we'll take dragonfly twist. Right hand down under right shoulder. Pivot the right heel. Lift the left arm and breathe. Relax the neck. So lengthen the crown of the head away from the tailbone, but then drop the right ear a little bit toward the right shoulder. 
extended side angle when you're ready. Pivot the back heel down, left forearm, left thigh. Right arm fighting whatever version feels supportive. So this practice is about building the body up, not breaking it down. And then breathe in a way that helps you feel a little bit more space from the knife edge of the right foot all the way up the right side body. Back stroke the right arm, pivot the right heel, crescent lunge. Send the hips forward, square the chest forward. Let the wrist be light. Big deep inhale here. Make your way to downward facing dog. Remember, you can always just step that left foot back. However you want to get there is great. From downward facing dog, we're going to add a little bit into that flow. I think I'm going to skip the skandasana part. So bear with me. We got a great opening to the hips. Inhale, right leg. Step between the thumbs this time on your exhale. Inhale, right arm. So we're in that dragonfly twist. Option to tense the left fingers or come up. Exhale, right forearm, right side, pivot the back heel down. Side angle, take a breath in. Stay in side angle as you breathe out. Let's start to back stroke that left arm. Pivot the left heel, crescent lunge on the inhale. So we'll keep all of that the same. This time, take a prayer twist to your right. So bring the hands to the heart, rotate the chest to the right, and then hinge forward that left elbow comes to the outside of the right thigh. Look strong to the back leg, lifting the muscles right behind the left kneecap up. A bit of a tricky balance transition coming up here. We're gonna shift the weight to the front foot. Actually, let's skip that. We're gonna, I'm all over the place. I started planning this class and then I kind of got like a bunch of different ideas that didn't settle on anything. Find star pose, pivot open toward the left side of your mat. Arms can come out to the side, they might come up. That feels like a lot. If you tend to get dizzy when you uh, come up from seated, bringing the arms up is maybe more than you're gonna want today. All right, we're in star. Take the heels in, toes out, sink it low into a horse pose. Hands can come to the hips or to the heart or to kind of a cactus shape here. Pulse it down for four. Imagine the heels squeezing in toward the midline under your body. Here's our last one. Stay low, pivot toward the back of your mat, interlace your hands on the left thigh, lift the right heel. We're gonna drive that right knee forward and then back, forward and then back. Keep that left hip hinged. Imagine that your butt is like sitting down in a chair, but you're also looking forward over a ledge here. For four, we're gonna take it back to horse. Three, two, just dipping that right toe. One, back into horse. Four little pulses for four. Three, squeeze the heels in. Two, to the front on one. Interlace your hands right over the right thigh. Pivot the left heel. Here we go, drive the left knee forward. Maybe one side of your body, the balance is a little tougher. That is definitely the case for me. If you're near a wall or a chair, you can absolutely hold on to that. We're gonna come back into horse in four, three, two, horse pose on one. Last time like this, four, three, two, stay low on one. We're gonna pivot, lift the hips up, pivot the toes in and then hinge forward through the hips. Hands can come down. Maybe you reach for the outside of the ankles. Take a few deep breaths here. And feel into some of the muscular work that you did in the back of the legs. Keep the feet split. Walk the fingertips up the mat to the left. Tent the right fingers underneath your chest. Inhale, that left arm comes up and open. Feel into the alignment of your shoulders and your wrists here. We're working to find a little bit of a, a line, some straight line from the wrists to the shoulders. 
Sweep the hands back toward the top of the mat, pivot the toes forward, lower the left knee all the way down, and then straighten the right leg out a bit. Lift the ball of the right foot. So you're in a hamstring stretch here. Again, real mindful of that sciatic nerve. Totally okay to have a bend in that knee. From here, re-bend the front knee, plant the hands down. We're going to take a like a uh, all fours, but the right leg's gonna come back. So push into the hands, bring that right leg back behind you, right knee, right elbow. Take the right knee back behind you, lift the chin, bend the knee, imagine the right toes touching the back of the head, and then bring that knee down, child's pose. Take one deep breath here. Stay for your exhale. Pull forward, back to hands and knees as you breathe in. Down dog as you breathe out. Back on the left side here. Inhale your left leg. Remember your goal or your intention. Step it between the thumbs on the exhale. Left arm opens. Maybe the right fingers tend or float as you breathe in. Set up side angle, left forearm, left side. Put it the back heel down as you breathe out. Take that right arm up. Long inhale. Back stroke the right arm as you exhale, spin the right heel up. Crescent lunge, come all the way into the posture. If you need more, look up. Hands through heart center, rotate to the left, hinge forward, right elbow, left thigh. Working you bring a little bit more softness. For me, it's usually the jaw. And working you create a little bit more structural support, probably root down through the balls of your feet. We're going to find star pose on the next inhale. Pivot that back heel. Arms can come out or up. And then horse. Spin the heels in a bit. Bend the knees. Hands to the side, to the hips, or to the heart. We'll sit low this time. Five, four, three. On one, we're going to the back. Two and one. Interlace the hands over that right thigh. Knee drivers to the back for five. And that's, yeah, four. Three, I'm second guessing myself. Two, back to horse on one for five, four, three, two, to the front on one, pivot, five, four, three, two, horse pose on one. Here it is, five, four, three, two, take it low on one, straighten the legs, pivot the toes, hinge at the hips and fold forward. For your hamstring stretch, Prasarita. Great place to do a little neck check. Your head a gentle shake or a big nod. Keep the feet, but walk the fingertips off to the right of your mat. The left fingertips tent underneath your sternum. Inhale that right arm up and back. Just lengthening the breath here. So extending those exhales. Long, full breath in. Sweep the hands to the top of the mat as you empty. Pivot the toes forward. Lower the back knee down. Take an inhale. And then straighten the left leg out. Just until you feel a meaningful amount of lengthening. So there's that sweet spot where we're getting a benefit and we're not adding any additional risk. Having trouble sussing out what that is, I would err on the side of less. Build some trust with the body. One more long inhale. And stay with it for the exhale. See if you can feel the shoulders letting go a bit more. And then look up, walk the hands forward. Plant the hands under the shoulders. You can tuck the right toes. That left leg's going to come back. Inhale the left leg back. Exhale, left knee, left elbow, use your core. Take the left leg back, bend the knee, point the toes, lift the chin as you breathe in. And then drop it to child's pose as you breathe out. We're gonna add on next round, full cycle of breath. Slide forward, find a little cow stretch here. As you inhale, down dog on the exhale. Working your way back to the top of the mat, 
lift the heels, little steps, big step or a hop. Feet about hip distance, still inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and forward fold. Get all the way up as you breathe in, find that full body stretch. Lightning chair, hinge at the hips, hug the navel in, lengthen the low back, bring the arms to the side. Option to lift the heels. Lower the heels, come to chair pose on the inhale so you can keep the hips low. Lightning chair on the exhale, lift the heels if you want. Couple more, pumping the breath, breathe in, breathe out. Two more. Hold your lightning chair for a moment here. We're gonna root down into the right foot, so drop the right heel, give a lift and lift the left knee, lift the arms up. Finding your balance, flex the left foot, lengthen the tailbone down towards your right heel. All right, we're gonna set up a figure four stretch. Bring the knife edge of the left foot over the top of the right thigh. Option to hold on to something for sure here. Hinge the hips back, bringing your chest down toward that left shin. Flex the left foot, looking forward. Take the left knee up and the arms up. Deep inhale, still finding that balance here. We're gonna find dragonfly twist from here. So bring that left leg way back. Left hand down, inhale the right arm up, back into our flow from here. Exhale the right forearm down, back heel pivots. Side angle, take a breath in. Stay for the breath out, maybe refine the pose. Crescent lunge on the inhale, sweep it up, lift. Prayer twist on the exhale. Full breath in. Bring out that twist a little bit deeper as you breathe out. Here we go, star pose on the inhale. Horse pose, pulse it for five. Breathe however you can. Four, we're going to the back on three, two, one. Knee drivers to the back for five. You can go fast or slow. Four, three, two, back to horse on one for five. Four, three, two, to the front on one. Five, four, three, two, one. Horse pose last time, five on this side, four, three, two, low on one, stand all the way up, maybe the arms come up this time, pivot the toes in, hinge at the hips, swan dive it forward, cross and read it out on the breath out. Lift the head, walk the right hand underneath the sternum, inhale the left arm up and open. Sweep the hands to the top of the mat, pivot the toes forward, drop the back knee down. Straighten out the right leg just until you feel a stretch. Deep, clear breath in. Soft jaw, relax a little more as you breathe out. Breathe into the front knee. This time, tuck the back side of toes under. Lift the arms up. Square the hips over that left leg as you breathe in. Bend the elbows as you breathe out. A little bit of a back bend, arching the chest. Crossing the ribs up, opening the collarbones out. We're gonna fly it forward into airplane from here. Shift the weight forward, airplane pose. Steer the left knee and the front of the left hip down. You can absolutely hold on to something if you've got something nearby here. In your airplane pose, we're gonna bring that left knee up, arms come up overhead as you breathe in. Lightning chair, feet down underneath the hips, sweep the arms to the side. Here we go, pump the breath, inhale chair. Exhale, lightning, option to lift the heels. Three more. For two. Last lightning chair, shift the weight into the left foot this time, right knee and arms come up. Find your balance on a fresh leg. For me, this side is always a little bit wobblier, a little more wobbly. Figure four stretch, outer edge of the right foot over the top of the left thigh. This move is gonna feel way more effective if you can think about hinging the hips, sending the tailbone back and bringing the chest forward toward that right shin. 
lengthen out the lower spine here. Really great stretch for the outer edge of the right hip and thigh. We're gonna come back up with the right knee and the arms. Inhale, dragonfly, step the ball of the right foot back, right hand under the right shoulder. As you exhale, peel the left arm open, find some space in that twist as you breathe in. Extended side angle as you breathe out. Got a full cycle of breath here in. And out, maybe you start that transition to crescent lunge, crescent lunge, finish the inhale. If you need more, you can take your eyeballs up. Prayer twist to the left. Another place where you've got a full cycle of breath. Relish in that little extra time here. Star pose. This is really the last time for this business. Breathe in. Course as you breathe out. Breathe as you can. We're adding reps this time for 10, nine, eight. Heels clicking in under your body as you lift. Five, four, we're going to the back in three, two, one. Knee drivers to the back for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Keep squeezing through the right glutes. Four, three, two, horse for 10, maybe a little lower, nine, eight, seven, six, or maybe it's a little higher. Listen to your body for sure. Last three, we're going to the front on one, two, and one. Knee drivers to the front, 10, nine, eight, root down to the heel on your front foot. Six, five, four, three, two, low horse and hold. Hold the horse low. Squeeze the heels in, like you're pulling the heels in toward the midline underneath your body. Close the eyes down if you need. Lengthen the sides of the neck. Come back to the goal that you set for your practice, back to the intention, and you embody it in some way, even if it's just a tiny way right there. Feel into the strength, feel into the commitment, feel into the compassion, right? If you opt out, opt out from a place that's aligned with that intention. For three, long breaths, two, straighten the legs on one, Whew. pivot the toes in, and then hinge forward through the hips. A little bit more balance work to go, and then we're on the mat. Inhale that right arm up, finding your twist to the back. Exhale, sweep the hands forward, give the toes forward, drop the back knee down. Lift to the chest just a little bit here as you breathe in. And then straighten that left leg. Full cycle of breath. Dive into the sensations of stretch. Come up to that supported crescent lunge. Keep the back toes tucked so there's a little bit of readiness happening there. Arms up on an in breath. Find that bowl post shape as you exhale, opening the chest. Maybe you pop, pop the chin up gently. Here we go, airplane pose, fly forward onto the left foot. Bring your awareness to the right kneecap, turn it to point down, tuck the tailbone. So it's not about how high that right leg goes. Imagine someone's holding your right ankle and dragging it back behind you. I'm gonna bring that right knee up. Inhale, reach the arms up. Lightning chair on the exhale. Pump the breath, last time. Chair pose, breathe in. Lightning, breathe out. You can, three more. Last lightning chair. Stand all the way up, push into the heels, sweep the arms up, let it be gentle, but strong. And then bring the hands to the side with the eyes closed. Feel your feet rooting down. You feel the energy in the body. We'll keep the eyes closed, but shrug the shoulders a couple times up, back and down. So some little shoulder circles here. We're eventually gonna work our way onto the back again. But if you want a little fun transition, link the eyes open, take the arms up on an inhale, lift your heels up. Keep the arms up, it'll make it a little bit more challenging. 
Start to bend the knees forward. Slow, slow, slow if you can. Squeeze the legs toward each other. The hips are gonna come down onto the heels. Remember, this is totally optional. You could just lay down onto your back. That's where we're all gonna, all gonna end up. If you land with the hips on the heels, pause and find your balance there. Shoulders over the hips. Feel that the bones of the legs are parallel to the earth. So if the knees are coming up, we're gonna work toward parallel there. Start to round the back. Bring the hands to the heart, round the back a bit. You're gonna set your butt down and then lower all the way down. Hug the knees into the chest. Circling the knees over the low back again. Cactus the left arm or tee it out to the left and then guide the knees to the right for a spinal twist. You can touch the crook of that left knee with your right fingertips. Back to the center. This portion of the practice is really important for calming the nervous system, clearing out some of the stress hormones that we build up when we're working out. Like we want these little spikes of stress, but we don't want it to stay elevated. Okay, it gives the body a chance to respond, rebalance. T or cactus, the right arm, drop the knees to the left. I always like the visual of like shaking up a snow globe. Okay, so if you've ever played with one of those, who hasn't, right? You shake it up, it's really fun. You watch all of those little particles and then you let the snow globe uh, get still. And all of those little particles of snow or confetti or whatever it is in there are allowed to Make their way back down to the surface. Finding stillness and rest. Ultimately, it's a representation of equilibrium or homeostasis. And back to the center. And bring the arms up overhead. Circle through your wrists. Slow circles here. And then a couple options from here. You can keep the legs the way they are. I like to bring um, the legs long. In fact, actually, you can try out what works for me. So bring your left leg long and then decide if you absolutely don't like it. Bend the right knee so that the right knee comes over and out to the right. You can bring that right foot way down if that feels good. And then you're gonna roll a little bit to the right. The left hand, bend the elbow, bring the left hand underneath your back, like between the shoulder blades. Sounds pretty awkward. Palm faces down, and then slowly come back down onto that left hand. Lift the head, bring the right hand to the back of the neck. And so it's kind of, you've got your right elbow pointing up and your left elbow pointing down with the eyes closed. The right knee is pointing out if that feels good. Relax through the belly. The fronts of the hips soften. So you just got this very little bit of uh, chest lift. You can shimmy that left hand underneath wherever it's going to feel most supportive between the shoulders for me. We'll be here for a ton of time. If it's not terribly uncomfortable for you, so you can work with gravity here. body go heavy against either the back of the left hand or the floor. And then slowly shift a little bit to the right. You can release that left hand down by your side. Bring the right leg down, bring the right arm down, pausing for a moment. You might get a little bit of pins and needles to the left arm. And we'll switch sides. So 
Right leg stays long. Maybe you bring that ankle a little bit more in front of the right hip than the left knee. Roll a little bit to your left so that you can tuck the right hand underneath between the shoulders. Bring the left hand to the base of the, the head or to the neck. It's worth it to kind of experiment a little bit. Maybe you move your shoulders a bit to the side. Maybe you adjust where that right hand is. Especially this is a new, new posture for me, so may well be new for you too. Good to have that like beginner's experience. Beginner's mind. And notice what comes up, right? If you're like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> And that's fine. If that's like your absolute truth, absolutely honor that. If that's your constant response to something new, it's worth being a little, little gently curious with yourself about what's going on there, why that might be not in a place of like shaming, but in a place of really just wanting to know what's, what's up for you. more cycles of breath with that right hand between the shoulders or behind the ribs. You can use that right hand as a reference point. Imagine the breath moving to the back of the lungs, bringing your breath toward the back of the right hand. You're ready, roll a little bit to the left, right palm down by your side, left arm down by your side. Bend the left leg to meet the right. Take your time to find Shavasana. It looks like there's places in your body that are just holding on to tension. I invite you to give them a little shake, a little shimmy through the shoulders, a little wiggle through the feet. Maybe you shake out the hands or the wrists for a second. And then invite the body back into relative stillness. Shrug the shoulders underneath you. The chin down toward the chest a bit to lengthen the back of the neck. And hone back in on your breath without straining to control the breath. Letting every inhale bring your awareness back to your body. Every exhale be like a wave of relaxation, just rolling through every little muscle fiber, every joint space. here for about 30 or 40 seconds. I trust that I'll call, call you up in a short amount of time so we can close together. But give yourself permission to be still and experience some rest as a way to balance your practice. One more moment here. In your mind's eye, review your practice. Remember all of those moments where you were efforting tension in the muscles or in whatever amount of work you were putting in and know that you did enough. Most importantly, that you are enough. Start to bring some gentle movement, circle the ankles, circle the wrists, slowly nod the head side to side. Take all of the time in the world to meet me in a seat. So see if you can coach yourself to move a little bit slower. Right? The pace of life that we've all kind of almost gotten, like I hesitate to use the word addicted, but almost, right? We've almost got a, a little bit of an addiction to the speed that we're moving through life in and then these opportunities to slow down can feel a little uh, uncomfortable. There can be some resistance. So. See if you can settle into a slightly more slower pace and just carry that with you, even if it's only internally. As you move forward into your day, join me in one more big deep breath. Reach the arms up overhead, shrug the shoulders into the ears, hold the breath at the top. 
And when you're ready, open your mouth, let it go. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna hit pause on the recording for anybody who's watching after the fact. Thanks for being here.